Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Master Plan for Aging Five Bold Goals Virtual Summit. Next slide, please. Today, we will have closed captioning available at the bottom, it should be at the bottom of your screen, lower right side, CC button, go ahead and um, click that. We have the Q&A function available at the bottom of your screen as well, so feel free throughout this presentation to send us your questions. And we'll be recording this um, summit today and we will post those on our um, California Department of Aging YouTube channel. Our transcripts will also be available um, on our CHHS Agency Master Plan for Aging page. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to the Deputy Cabinet Secretary at the Office of <coughs> Richard Figueroa. Good afternoon, Mr. Figueroa. Great, welcome to be here. Um, so just real quick, I wanted to just give a big shout out to <clears throat> Kim McCoy Wade um, and kind of the, sorry, I have a little, ho little hoarse voice, uh, and the kind of the all of government um, uh, effort that went into creating the master plan. And the Stakeholder Advisory Committee was a wonderful um, uh, opportunity to kind of hear from, from just a wide array of, of stakeholders. We then turned that information into um, an all of government review of both uh, the, the Stakeholder Advisory Committee recommendations as well as those things that excuse me, have bubbled up from state government during the process um, to, to um, have what you have now have in front of you as a master plan for aging. That was then followed up by some very specific budget elements that followed very closely on to the actual release that kind of helped um, further, further emphasize some of the major points and elements of the master plan. Um, and again, reflects the governor's, um, I think the whole thing reflects the governor's uh, seriousness uh, at, looking at looking at these issues and ways we can kind of more build it into the more permanent structure of state government moving forward. Um, very much appreciate that that it is really a 10 year um, uh, has 10 year goals in it, but a lot of just very short term actionable items, both through budget and other and other uh, program implementation. And again, and, and kind of capped off with um, uh, the the uh, proposal for um, kind of a new senior advisor on a on aging, disability, and uh, Alzheimer's uh, in the governor's office. Again, kind of reemphasizing. Uh, or emphasizing the focus that the governor's office is going to have on these issues moving forward. So I know you're going to have a lot to cover today. Um, I just I just hope that you 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 do take um, a, away from this that we did take this obviously very seriously. This is an issue that had long been unaddressed uh, in any kind of comprehensive way, and the way the master plan is constructed covers many many different elements of of state government, which then is going to be buttressed by. Uh, more permanent changes either through statute or um, through the state budget process. So again, my big welcome on, be on behalf of the governor uh, and, and look forward to hearing the results of, of the summit. So Kim, I'll let you take it away. Lots of other things happening today. Um, uh, lots of COVID stuff, vaccine, everything else. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my, uh, my leave right now, but again, thank you all for, for attending and, and um, uh, look forward to the results. Kim? Thank you so much, Big, uh, and thank you to the governor and the entire team in the governor's office who has continued to prioritize aging uh, before COVID, during COVID, uh, and throughout with the just breaking news of the state's prioritization of vaccinations for 65 and over. That's, that's, and, we're, we're, and we're working on that as we speak, so I'm a little hoarse. There's been a lot, a lot of talk in the last few days. So oh, anyway. Go do that. <laughs> thank you, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Okay. That is, of course, Bye -bye. our top one. Okay. Right now. Bye -bye. Thank you, Big. So yes, what a wonderful welcome. And uh, I want us to quickly get started. Welcome, Secretary. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Uh, we wanted to just set the table um, uh, for a few minutes before we jump into our conversation for the Master Plan for Aging that we released uh, last Wednesday. Next slide, please. Uh, we are calling this a summit, a summit to talk about the five bold goals and hear from the leaders and partners from all three sectors, state, uh, leaders, stakeholders, and legislators, partners in this effort. Uh, I hope you can take a moment and perhaps picture your favorite summit. Uh, I've been thinking about Mount, Mount Diablo in the East Bay, uh, where you can, after lots of, of work to get to the top, whether you drive, walk, bike, uh, however you get to the top of the summit, uh, you, get a, you get a better view, you get a different view. You get maybe a, hopefully on a clear day, uh, a, a far reaching view 
And that's what we're hoping to do today. We've been working hard to get to this moment. So many people, uh, this is your plan that you have created. Uh, and we're gonna take this moment on the summit to look out and see what we see. Uh, importantly, there's lots of ways down from the summit. There's lots of ways forward. Uh, there's lots to take in. Uh, and so that's all gonna be really important that we share each other's perspectives and others' routes and others' experience and skills and put that together to chart the way forward. Next slide, please. You'll note the format of the day is kind of like an open house for a variety of reasons. Uh, we're gonna go through each goal with these uh, lightning round panels, uh, but also just wanna acknowledge the day. Uh, once again, we are here in a day that is historic uh, for our democracy and for racial justice, that is historic in our fight against COVID uh, and saving, racing to save uh, older Californians' lives. Uh, and so we know people have a lot going on. Uh, and of course, our own uh, physical health, mental health, our families and friends is uh, uh, first and foremost on everyone's mind. So come as you can, come as you are, stay as long as you can. It'll also be recorded. We thought it was so important to convene, but want it to be a space that, uh, that works for you and that is supportive. So uh, here we are together, but truly it's an open house. So before I do a little quick level set on Master Plan for Aging uh, and the new framework we rolled out, I do want to start with where we are, which of course is COVID. Next slide, please. Uh, so that is what the administration's first priority is vaccines. And as you just heard, that is where uh, the governor's office and our secretary and, and frankly, all hands on deck, as the governor says, uh, and older adults were uh, just announced formally as a state priority today for 1B moments ago. Uh, I've already seen uh, counties across the state, Sacramento, Orange County, Contra Costa, and more uh, rolling out how-to information. So uh, look for that information from your health plan and health provider if you have one, from your county public health. But uh, we do want to make sure that you can access the free and safe vaccines, help your friends and family. So that, of course, is job one. Second, uh, even after that first dose of vaccine, we are all still staying home to stay safe and stay connected. And we wanna make sure everybody has these resources. These are resources that have been mailed out by AARP and DMV and the Medi-Cal program. We put them on the radio, on Facebook. Uh, we put them on social media, but I just wanna take a moment and lift up two to make sure everybody has them. One is our state aging information line. If you are looking to connect to aging and independent services in your community, you can always call 1-800-510-2020, whether you're looking for meals, caregiver support, uh, respite, the aging services are there for you 24 seven. And of course, uh, our, our, our service that we expanded during COVID, the Friendship Line California, again, looking for some uh, conversation, a chat about something small, big, there is no conversation too small or too big for Friendship Line California available in English and Spanish at this point, 1-888-670-1360. They are really waiting to hear from you. Please reach out uh, at any time. Okay, so COVID not only making us focus on vaccines and of course services and surrounding uh, our older adults with all the support they need, but next slide, also making the master plan for aging work all the more urgent. Uh, in the words of our incoming president, we must build back better. Uh, we must be use this as our secretary Galley says as an accelerant of the change that we know was needed. So with that sign of hope, the master plan for aging was released. Uh, it is a framework. It is something that uh, we will all need to build out together. There will, I hope everybody can see themselves in it, but I'm sure we're also seeing gaps and things we would change and build upon. And that's what it's supposed to be a flexible framework. So as you see on this slide, um, we started in, in June 2019 with the governor's commitment uh, based in data, data for a changing California. Uh, a couple key slides. First of all, how more of us were living longer. Uh, and California has some of the life, longest life expectancy in uh, the US. Um, tragically, this number will be impacted, uh, particularly among black and Latino and some API families by the terrible, terrible toll of COVID. Uh, but life expectancy is uh, overall, and we, we will commit to return to increasing for Californians. Uh, this next slide shows also an important demographic is that that increase in longevity is also changing the mix of our families and our communities and our state so that more of the population is older, a real shift from 2010. 
uh, so that we need to make sure our families and communities work for people of all ages across the lifespan. Uh, and again, not just at 60, 70, 80, 90, and even 100. And the third slide we'll just show is uh, the aging demographic, just like all of California, uh, is changing racially with greater racial and ethnic diversity. And that brings so much cultural resources and different cultural traditions around aging, but also legacies of racial discrimination uh, and health disparities uh, that, that can be cumulative in aging and that we need to remedy. So lots about aging is changing and California is changing. Given that data, what did we do? Next slide, please. We, uh, together we engaged is the campaign. Unprecedented public participation in a state stakeholder process stakeholder engagement through an advisory committee that uh, produced more than 800 recommendations and multiple work groups on research, long-term services, equity, and more. Uh, community roundtables with legislators beginning in person in Bakersfield and ending virtually in Humboldt. Uh, so thank you to the legislature for those continued commitment. We also have to do enormous thanks to our former first lady, Maria Shriver, who led the groundbreaking task force on Alzheimer's prevention and preparedness with 10 bold recommendations that informed the plan. And then a cabinet work group, which I'm very pleased to say ended up being an all cabinet work group. All 10 cabinet members were all in recognizing that aging has implications for every part of state government. So what do we end up with? Five bold goals for 2030 and our 10 year vision. And that's what we're gonna focus on today, hearing from the experts, housing for all ages and stages, health reimagined. Goal three is our inclusion and equity, not isolation. Goal four, caregiving that works. And goal five, affording aging. I'm gonna show you a real busy slide next. Underneath those five goals are 23 strategies. I hope everyone can see themselves in there, whether it's work on transportation to get us beyond cars for both climate and aging and disability reasons, or whether it's a geriatric workforce. We need more um, healthcare workers who know all about geriatrics as more of us, that's more likely who they'll be seeing is people with geriatric health needs. So lots of strategies beyond these goals. But as Fig said, we didn't just wanna do a 10 year visionary document, although of course that vision is critical. Next slide. We also wanted to get to work. And so we laid out a hundred plus initiatives that the Newsom administration can commit to for the next two years. I don't have to tell anyone on this call, it's a critical next two years. We've got the legislature back. We've got uh, the Newsom administration. We have a new federal partnership. We've got two years to really lay some critical groundwork for a transformation in aging. And so to make sure it's not top down, we've got a local playbook. Nothing in California happens without leadership from our communities and deep partnership between cities, counties, uh, in the state, nonprofits and government and private sector. So the local playbook will help to engage us all in this transformation. And last but not least, we wanna be held accountable. We wanna measure our progress and we want you to measure your progress with the data dashboard. Thank you so much to our partners at the Department of Public Health, Let's Get Healthy campaign for their expertise, expertise and collaboration and building a data-driven dashboard. They're the first to say 1.0, already planning the first updates for very soon to try to really measure our progress as a state, but also by place, by race, by gender, by all the matters that drive equity so we truly can become a California for all ages. That was a whirlwind tour of the master plan for aging, but now we really wanna get into the policies and the partnerships on the programs that are gonna drive that change with uh, some of our states and frankly, nation's most dynamic leaders. The first conversation we're gonna have is goal one, housing for all ages and stages, reflecting that person-centered view of wanting, all of us wanting to be able to live where we choose as we age in communities that are age, disability and dementia friendly and climate and disaster ready. And we have a target of millions of new housing options to age well. To join us in this conversation about where we go from here is our Secretary of Housing, Lourdes Castro Ramirez, Secretary of Business, Consumer Services and Housing Agency, forgive me. Uh, Senator Scott Wiener is hoping to join us as well, although uh, lots of people's schedule is incredibly fluid today. So bear with us as we uh, all come together. And we're delighted to be joined by the Associate State Director from AARP, Rafi Nazarian as well. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, in an effort to keep, uh, and I'll, I'm sure our team will let us know when Senator Weiner is able to join us and we'll, and we'll fold him right in. In an effort to make this conversation um, uh, as lively as possible, our team has put together this concept of a lightning round. 
and we're going to ask you, we're going to do three rounds of questions. First, the 10 year, the bold goal, the moonshot about millions of new units of housing in, in communities that are age friendly, disability and dementia friendly. Then we're going to turn to, okay, how about the next two years? What's, what's on your list for what can we get done in the next two years? And then last, we want to ask, uh, we're going to kind of borrow a little bit from the presidential moment and say, what's your first 100 days with the master plan? What are you going to do um, to get started? So with that, Secretary, I'd like to start with you and ask you about the bold goal of millions new house housing for all ages and stages with lots of new affordable housing options created. Secretary. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Kim, so much. Uh, I, I hope you can hear me. Good, okay. Thank you so much for the invitation and uh, just want to recognize the wonderful work of the Department of Aging and uh, the Health and Human Services uh, Agency led by Secretary Galley, uh, and of course the leadership of uh, Governor Newsom in um, advancing this very uh, important um, roadmap and uh, this you know, bold master plan that uh, speaks to uh, the importance of making sure that we are doing everything possible to uh, ensure that as we age um, from a housing perspective, uh, that we have the ability to to, uh, to make you know decisions based on choices that are available, and so from a housing perspective, uh, we have been very involved and engaged uh, in helping to uh, ensure that our um, efforts to preserve housing affordability and to expand affordable housing uh, across the state are uh, well um, integrated into this overall master plan. Uh, the agency that I have the, um, the honor of leading is responsible for the coordination, uh, frankly, of housing across the spectrum from addressing uh, the need uh, to expand housing and services for individuals experiencing homelessness uh, to also promoting home ownership uh, and making sure that homeowners that are um, in their homes and choose to stay have the ability to do so. Uh, and so we uh, look forward uh, to advancing um, and accelerating, quite frankly, um, our efforts, uh, particularly in the area of uh, affordable housing, uh, you know, even uh, prior to the COVID-19 um, pandemic and the economic um, impact that that has had on households across the, the state, uh, California, as many of you know, uh, was already experiencing a housing crisis. Uh, and a housing crisis that was largely a result of not having enough affordable housing. Uh, so a primary goal for us will be to work together with local communities to expand the supply of affordable housing. And I'm you know, uh, very uh, excited and encouraged uh, by uh, not only the work that is happening currently in terms of building more units, uh, but also what is um, captured in the governor's um, 2021-22 budget uh, that uh, calls for additional resources. Uh, and uh, just you know, the last comment that I will make, uh, Kim, is uh, very much uh, impressed by the robust stakeholder engagement process that was led in defining um, this master plan. You know, I think that when we're working on these complex issues, um, particularly when it comes to housing affordability, it's important that we not just work with the housing providers, but that we basically work across the spectrum. Uh, and that's exactly, I think, uh, the, the manner in which this master plan was shaped, um, bringing you know, the cabinet secretaries, bringing in the, uh, the very diverse stakeholders that care about promoting and expanding housing for all additional housing options. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. And I do really appreciate that, that broad, expansive view of, uh, you know, maybe traditionally people thought about quote unquote senior housing, but of course, older adults live in all kinds of settings across 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So really that broad inclusive view is, is really reflective of the diversity uh, of the population. Uh, Rafi, can I turn to you? How about what is AARP and your perspective on the bold view, the 10 year vision for housing? 
Sure, thank you so much, uh, Director McCoy-Wade, and it's nice to be here with you, Secretary Castro. It's an honor to be here today representing AARP's 3.3 million members and the 53 members of AARP's age-friendly network of states and communities. And those are, uh, as many of you uh, on this Zoom know, those are California cities, counties, and towns that represent over 22 million Californians. Um, and so uh, overall, uh, the, the, the big picture, uh, really, during the master plan for aging process, um, AARP advocated for California to, to join the network of age-friendly states and communities. Um, and in partnership with the CDA and the state, um, we think that that framework over the next 10 years will really add value to the state um, and really bring that aging lens that's, uh, that's needed to be focused uh, so that California is uh, a great place for people, um, uh, older adults and people of, of all ages. Um, you know, there's so much great stuff here in the master plan, and I know, uh, I know, Kim, you really that one slide that had all that, uh, all the bullets on there. There's so much, so I'll try to be brief. But uh, really, we looked at a lot of different parts of this, and you know, um, housing is a main focus for us at, at AARP. Um, in fact, uh, we are about to release uh, a housing report that we've worked on for the last year called Everybody Needs a Home. Um, and re we'll really be focusing on the importance uh, of, of housing uh, for the state. We're really looking forward to working with, um, you know, our legislators and, and state departments on that. And I'll get a little more into that when we get into the more granular two-year 100 day process, as you said, but as far as 10 years out, we're really going to be looking at integration of housing and supportive services. So we're, you know, what we see while many older Californians don't require supportive services to live independently, many do uh, in order to uh, uh, remain out of institutions. AARP California will urge policymakers over the 10 year process to encourage the coordination of housing, health services, and other supports to facilitate access um, and efficiencies in service delivery. Um, older adults who are vulnerable particularly and, and those who are frail and with, with low incomes are in particular need of these services. Um, so supportive housing should promote residents' autonomy and decision-making while ensuring high quality um, services. And consumer protections should ensure safety for consumers and encourage a, um, a home-like atmosphere and offer individualized approach. So we'll support initiatives to expand the availability of high quality um, supportive housing developments and high quality housing. We'll also be looking at the LTSS, the long-term long services, um, benefits and AARP will continue to work um, uh, to fully implement the LTSS public benefit. Uh, we really want to look to simplify the regulatory process. So we'll work with um, state and local entities to simplify the regulatory and financing process that slow the development of affordable housing uh, at both the state and local level. Um, as we all know, a range of measures has been introduced both locally and statewide to simplify the process of developing affordable housing. Um, and AARP um, has the opportunity to join forces uh, and add data, case studies, and proof points that can illustrate the impact of these measures on housing for older adults and housing that allows families to live in the same communities as their parents and grandparents. Um, that's a really key point that I want to um, emphasize is that through our work with the Age Friendly Network here in California, we hear from a lot of folks that, um, you know, their families, their support networks are having to leave California because they can't afford to be here. Uh, and a lot of our older adults um, are losing their support network. So that's something that we really want to focus on as well. Um, and then, you know, beyond housing and, you know, other parts of the master plan, um, we really want to look at, um, you know, uh, in, under creating parks and under resourced areas of the state, you know, working with the state and local entities, we want to target new public and private park funds. Um, so communities that are 
that are more than a 10 minute walk from a park, which I think is currently about 25% throughout the state. Um, so that all Californians of all ages and abilities um, can access parks in all areas of the state. And really under transportation beyond cars, again, during the MPA process, AARP prioritized focus on community walkability. Uh, we focused on vision zero, active transportation, complete streets uh, and multimodal and safe transportation options. So we'll continue to work with the state and local governments and uh, stakeholders on all these things uh, as far as the, the greater 10 year goal. That's wonderful. And yeah, absolutely. One of the initial commitments from the administration is to have California join uh, AARP state network. I believe we're the state number seven, if I have that right, uh, you'll correct me. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, that's that's one of our immediate actions. But let's turn to the two years. Let's turn to this legislative cycle, our federal partner cycle. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, what we think, uh, what you think uh, um, is the priority. Secretary Castro Ramirez. Yes, thank you, Kim. And I just, you know, want to circle back to um, many of the the, the points that um, were uh, mentioned uh, by uh, Rafi from AARP that. We're so excited um, and look forward to the release of uh, the report that you uh, mentioned, because I, I think as you were describing the importance of uh, everything from the uh, integration of housing and services, very you know, much aligns to the commitment that we have as a state of working together, health and human services and you know, our housing entities uh, to ensure that we are um, advancing um, housing solutions that, that are you know, bring or that require, um, you know, for us to marry, you know, housing and services uh, together within, you know, a housing development or uh, to ensure that that connection exists, you know, to, to residents. Um, the, the second piece in terms of the regulatory uh, process and looking to streamline and uh, simplify and reduce the, the speed at which we're able to produce affordable housing, a key priority for us. Uh, last uh, year uh, in 2020, the governor signed uh, into law AB 434, uh, which is um, focused on uh, essentially consolidating a number of our housing programs uh, and uh, ensuring that we are able to, um, to be more nimble and, um, and uh, really, you know, um, streamlined in the funding um, or the housing finance a funding um, a approach, uh, which we know, you know, can add costs to, to the um, actual uh, construction of affordable housing. Uh, that is a key priority for us, the implementation of AB 434, which begins, you know, this year and uh, will uh, result in uh, producing what we're beginning to call um, sort of a consolidated uh, super funding, uh, housing funding, um, NOFA in 2022. Uh, um, but beyond that, um, you know, just the, the priorities for us, um, as I mentioned, are to expand um, uh, rental um, affordable housing uh, to ensure, especially uh, currently with uh, COVID-19 and the, um, the economic impact that it has had on uh, communities across the, um, the, the state, you know, to ensure that we're also doing everything possible in terms of uh, keeping families housed, keeping seniors housed, uh, keeping uh, seniors who own uh, their homes uh, from losing their homes, so uh, foreclosure prevention. Uh, also uh, working um, uh, very much in terms of building on, on uh, the successes that we um, had in 2020. I think, Kim, you mentioned that, you know, this crisis um, in some ways presented an opportunity for uh, many of us um, to to come together and accelerate our efforts. And one you know, a key example of that was uh, the initiative, um, home, the Home Key Initiative, which uh, was really a collaborative effort of the state and local communities, uh, leveraging federal resources to acquire um, motels, hotels, and vacant buildings, and rapidly you know, convert them into permanent long-term housing. Um, as a result of that effort, uh, we, were you know pleased um, or the governor you know uh, announced uh, in late uh, December that the state, uh, with um, you know collaboration and partnership from local entities, was able to close escrow on 94 housing uh, projects for just over 6,000 new units of permanent housing. 
for individuals experiencing homelessness or at risk for homeless. Uh, and um, I think you know many uh, uh, folks that are gathered here also know that we're very concerned about the number of elderly or seniors um, that are um, entering um, the you know become beginning to experience homelessness or housing instability. Uh, and so as we um, build on this home key initiative from 2020, uh, we're pleased that you know the governor also is proposing to augment home key with additional dollars. Um, the budget calls for $750 million um, to um, continue building on the success of Home Key. Um, so again, you know, a very, very much focused on doing all that we can to expand the affordable housing supply, uh, to um, create uh, partnerships that allow uh, us as a state, you know, to bring together both housing and services, because we recognize that certain populations um, uh, you know, require that level of, um, of support, you know, to be able to have, um, to enjoy really, you know, the housing stability uh, that they have. Uh, and then lastly, um, in the area of working with local jurisdictions, um, we have done um, an incredible sort of um, amount of work through our housing and community development department and providing technical assistance and working closely with communities. Um, as we, you know, uh, look to expanding um, affordable housing um, options, we are also we also think that it's very important that we begin to lean in and to hold, you know, communities accountable that are not stepping up and meeting their affordable housing goals. Uh, and so th there will be um, also emphasis um, on um, accountability and uh, working with uh, jurisdictions to. Um, ensure that they're also leading in the space of producing more um, housing options, particularly for um, seniors, um, uh, low wage, you know, working um, households uh, and others, right? Um, so uh, we're, we're excited, we're ready. Uh, and, uh, you know, just want to, of, of course, acknowledge that this work is done largely by um, our housing community development department uh, uh, California Housing Finance Agency, uh, also the Homeless Coordinating and Financing Council, all which fall within uh, this agency. That's wonderful. And I love how the connections you make to both the opportunities for older adults, but how generations are connected and how families uh, all need affordable housing, the workforce all needs affordable housing. Uh, Rafi, can you speak to us uh, one or two specific priorities that AARP has in this space for the next couple of years? Sure. So you you mentioned California joining the uh, H-Friendly Network. So really one of our main priorities is through uh, uh, something that we call our strategic age-friendly team. Uh, we will work with the state and provide free technical assistance to help California build out its uh, its age-friendly action plan, uh, which is, you know, this is the five-year process, but this will be in the first two years of it, and then to begin implementation of that plan. And part of that will be, as I mentioned earlier in my remarks, um, there are 53 cities, counties, towns that are already part of this. So connecting the state with these folks who've already done a lot of this um, so that there's coordination and that, you know, that um, that uh, best practices and ideas are shared uh, throughout with, with the state and its cities and counties. Again, I mentioned our report on housing that's coming out. So over the next two years, uh, AARP will engage in a robust um, advocacy campaign to advance senior housing um, as we remain committed to advocate for housing for all as well. Uh, we'll amplify the voice of older Californians in support of affordable uh, housing issues. And we're also gonna work really hard to engage AARP members and others who are 50 plus to amplify their voice when it, and, and when it comes to, to housing. Um, we'll really work to bolster production of more affordable housing units um, you know, working with the state, the legislature, and local leaders to identify ways to bolster production of more housing options to age well in California, um, you know, suburban, rural, urban communities. A um, couple examples would be the creation of more accessory dwelling units that are affordable to support aging well, caregiving and affordable housing, uh, and exploring financing mechanisms and pursuing other strategies to continue to prioritize the types of housing units that are not being produced uh, uh, 
by the market. And then I'll, I'll end with, you know, really working on creating a mechanism to repurpose underutilized commercial properties for affordable housing. Um, we're seeing a lot of that around the state. And um, I know that Senator Caballero has um, introduced a, a, a bill that, that we're looking at. Um, and, you know, while the increase in e-commerce um, had begun to depress the value of commercial properties even before the pandemic. Um, it appears that the pandemic and, econo and economic slowdowns have accelerated these trends. So empty shopping malls and occupied unoccupied motels and hotels are more available for this opportunity as the secretary mentioned, project room key. Um, so we'll be working with um, the state and our legislators on, on those issues in the next two years. Wonderful, and I want to welcome uh, Senator Weiner to the conversation. Thank you so much. You're right on time. We're talking Thank about you. top housing priorities for this legislative session, uh, this budget cycle, uh, that help older Californians and, of course, all Californians uh, afford uh, have ho good housing, but housing in communities that supports uh, aging well. So, welcome, and love to hear your priorities for the next two years. <clears throat> sure, wonderful. Uh, thank you for uh, having me. Apologies for running a little bit uh, behind. Fine. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, so we, we're, um, I'm excited about this cycle. Um, excited we as a legislature, I think uh, now understand far better how to operate and legislate in a pandemic. So hopefully we will not have the crazy stopping and starting that we had uh, last year. Um, in addition, you know, hopefully by the end of this um, uh, legislative session, uh, I'm hoping we will be at herd immunity and be able to, uh, be back together again. Um, so uh, I, I think a few things uh, beyond, I'll get to housing, but um, I think there are a number of priorities we need to really focus on when it comes to aging. Um, first, I, I think we need to really recognize the um, obscenely high and growing uh, percentage of our homeless population that who are uh, older. Um, and the really unique needs of our uh, older homeless population who are a combination of people who've been homeless for a long time, uh, but also tragically newly homeless people because of housing instability, because of um, losing a job and the discrimination against older people in the workforce uh, and so forth. And just like, you know, we need to be mindful of the unique needs of um, young homeless people, teenagers uh, who are homeless, uh, transition age youth. Um, we need to be mindful of the needs of our older homeless population in terms of housing, uh, but also the health issues uh, that are just, can be really horrific. Um, and so as we continue to do work to shore up uh, funding for our homeless residents and create more supportive housing, um, we need to really focus on the needs of older homeless people. Um, access to mental health uh, treatment, which is something that uh, I, is a big focus for me. We passed some very aggressive uh, mental health access, uh, mental health treatment access legislation. Last year, we're about to introduce a, a new bill to follow up on that. Um, so many people who may have um, insurance uh, may not be able to actually get mental health uh, treatment. And, uh, and we know that even though um, it's when people are young that they're most likely to first manifest uh, mental health issues. Uh, these issues can really get worse and worse as people age and more challenging. Um, and especially now where so many people are isolated and suffering from depression and anxiety, so forth, uh, we need to make sure people have access uh, to care. Uh, and we're doing some work, gonna continue to do some work this year to increase access to CalFresh. Um, so many uh, seniors and people living with disabilities are food insecure we make it way, way too ridiculously hard to sign up for CalFresh. And so we wanna require a much easier sign up process, particularly for seniors and people with disabilities. So now getting the housing, uh, when you look at you know, wanting people to be able to age with dignity and gracefully, housing is a critical part of that in terms of people's stability. Um, and when we talk about um, people also you know, who maybe have a home and want to downsize, we need to make it possible uh, for them to do that. And a lot of the work we're doing 
Um, it's overall, we have a broken housing system in California. We are short millions of homes. Um, it's hurting everyone unless you're wealthy. Uh, and uh, so we need a dramatically increased supply of housing of every kind, whether it's an ADU or subsidized housing for low income or extremely low income people, um, uh, just privately produced housing for our middle class, because that's, uh, you know, 99% of people live in market rate housing, 99% of low income Californians live in market rate housing. So we need to build housing of every variety to stabilize this very unstable situation. Um, and we also, you know, for people who are aging and maybe, um, you know, need more compact, um, walkable communities where people um, don't have to go in, in your car to get everywhere that you can walk around and you can walk around safely. Uh, that is so important. And so uh, we're doing, you know, a lot of work to really facilitate uh, more of that housing density, um, apartment buildings, condos. Uh, what, senior senior housing and so on and so forth, um, where people can live in an environment um, where everything is a little closer together and they can walk to the store. Um, where we're in, you know, building some of these newer buildings that are more accessible. And in some of the work we've done around around housing in general, one of the things that uh, we learned early on when disability advocates came to us and said, we like new uh, multi-unit construction because it is accessible. Um, you have elevators, you have other, um, uh, you have ways for people in wheelchairs to, uh, to be able to enter and exit and not have to have someone carry them up the 100 year old staircase. And so um, we're, we're gonna do some aggressive housing work this year um, Rafi mentioned uh, Senator Caballero's bill around converting commercial. Uh, we have legislation by our leader, Senator Atkins, to legalize duplexes statewide, which is a, um, a really important move, and also lot splits, so you can do two duplexes. Um, I have legislation to make it easier for cities to zone for up to 10 unit apartment buildings. In, um, this is Senate Bill 10 in non sprawl areas. Uh, we're going to be doing some other good work um, as well. And of course, we need to quickly this month um, uh, extend our eviction moratorium uh, so that people don't get evicted during the pandemic. And then we are requesting $5 billion in the budget um, to uh, make sure that people don't come out of the pandemic with massive rent debt. Uh, so a lot of important housing work that we have to do this year and we will do this year in addition to all of these other needs. Thank you so much. And I, I really appreciate how, you know, housing is health and housing is food and housing is mental health and just all those connections are so core. Okay, you're going to be our first experiment with our true lightning round. Uh, to wrap it up, we're going to ask you uh, the 100 day question. What is the one thing that you are going to make sure gets done in 100 days just to put you on the spot uh, it, it, with, uh, with, good, with good cheer? Uh, so I'll start with you, Secretary. What's on your 100 day must do list here? Yes, um, quickly, uh, before I go to the, to the lightning round, <laughs> just want to acknowledge, you know, the senator's leadership on housing and how uh, excited um, and ready we are to, you know, to, to work with the legislature on um, everything from keeping families in their um, homes uh, to um, increasing the pace at which we're producing affordable housing, and then also looking at ways to ensure that that uh, housing is integrated into the fabric of the community from a housing perspective, from a transportation, from a health perspective, from a transportation perspective, and from an education perspective. Uh, and so, in the next uh, 100 days, uh, Kim, I think what's top of mind for 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 me and for this agency working with the governor's office is um, the. Uh, uh, extension of AB 3088, which is, um, as you know, the, the senator mentioned, uh, critical to ensuring that um, individuals that have been impacted by COVID-19 are not at risk of losing their um, housing. Uh, and then, um, you know, secondly, and connected to this is um, the implementation and getting those uh, dollars from the federal government uh, that were made available under this uh, stimulus in December. Um, the state is projected to receive just over $2.6 billion. And so we're you know, very uh, focused on ensuring that um, those resources um, are um, made available as quickly as possible to 
uh, to renters and to landlords that have been impacted. Again, uh, but, you know, very much you know, focused on keeping families housed. We, we have federal stimulus dollars coming much smaller than that in aging, but nonetheless equal commitment to get it out to communities and families ASAP. Uh, Rafi, what's your uh, top, uh, top must do for 100 days in a minute or less? Thanks, and just want to acknowledge Senator Weiner. And it's been a pleasure to work with him on uh, on housing issues, and your leadership on that issue is truly appreciated. So, real quickly, uh, again, uh, enrolling the network, uh, enrolling the state in the network, we can get that done really easily in the first hundred days. I mentioned our report, "Everyone Needs a Home," that's going to be released on January 28th, and we'll we'll share that far and wide, so folks can really see what we have in there about older adults. Um, um, and, you know, older adults particularly experiencing a range of housing problems resulting from high housing costs, uh, inaccessible home design features, and more. Um, and so the report will really, really focus on that. And while AARP is an organization that serves adults at ages 50 plus, a large portion of our work, particularly here in California, is advocating for communities to become livable for people of all ages and all abilities. And that really focuses on housing options for all. So as the state continues to go through uh, this unprecedented housing crisis, AARP California will take a more active role in developing housing policy statewide. And just a couple real quick things in the first 100 days. One, I said we're going to be releasing our report. We're setting up uh, meetings with key legislators and key stakeholders to explore part opportunities for collaboration, um, supporting uh, increasing housing options for homeless individuals, such as Project Home Key. Um, and as the Senator mentioned, we'll be uh, analyzing the pack of newly introduced legislation uh, on housing to determine which align with AARP and what we will support. All right, and Senator Weiner, you get the last word. What is on your must-do list for the next hundred days? Or you can give it to you can give it to the crowd too, which would be to all of our uh, must-do lists for the next hundred days. Sure. Well, obviously, extending the eviction moratorium and getting uh, significant funds into a rent assistance um, program, which both to avoid tenants having rent debt, but also it's to the benefit of um, particularly smaller landlords because when renters can pay their rent. Uh, that means landlords are getting income and can pay their mortgage and bills. Um, so that's one. Um, and then, uh, and the other is uh, and vaccines, vaccines, vaccines. And um, I want to, if you're saying 100 days, so what's that, about April 20th or thereabout? By April 20th, we had, I'm going to curse, damn well, better have vaccinated, you know, everyone 65 and older and be down into my category because I'm next, 50 to 64. Um, and I want to, by April 20th, I want to be able to see my parents again, because I haven't seen them in more than a year because of this virus. Uh, and so we need to, uh, and I know we will, step it up in a huge way. And I am looking forward uh, to viewing the mega mass inoculation sites that we're going to set up everywhere uh, and just get everyone vaccinated. Thank you so much. Uh, you brought tears to my eyes thinking about seeing my parents. So thank you for that uh, inspiration. We're going to hit that together. And that actually is a perfect bridge. Let me thank all of our housing panelists and turn to our health panelists because we all know housing and health are hand in hand. So thank you so much for your time and thank be you. well on a very busy historic day.